And we are live. Welcome to another edition of DT Live. Today we're going to be playing with Arch Linux a little more. This was a bit of an impromptu stream. I didn't give live. you guys too much of a heads up on this. I only decided I was going to stream this evening uh, about 30 minutes ago. And I know the YouTube notification system is broken. Uh, for some reason, YouTube has got the time zone I live in all screwed up where it's like two hours off. So some of you are saying that you got a notification I was going to stream, but I was going to stream two hours ago. <laughs> That's obviously wrong, because how can I go back and stream back in time, right? So I don't know what's wrong with YouTube. So for some reason, they've got me living in the Pacific time zone here in the U.S. And I live in the central time zone. So all the time, every time I do a live stream, I have to keep that two-hour... Uh, adjustment in mind. So I'm going to wait a little bit, give people plenty of time to get here since again the stream was not announced. I want to make sure anybody that wants to watch tonight's stream has a chance, at least a few minutes to get here. So I'm going to go back to the YouTube chat here. Quite a few of you already in the chat. So yeah, so Cuberjan, <laughs> when is the stream? According to YouTube, it should have started two hours ago. And my response is, YouTube is a broken mess. So, uh, YouTube has, it seems to get be getting worse and worse. The notification system is really bad. Also, those of you that create content on YouTube, the new uh, YouTube analytics and dashboard and everything is just horrible. It's bloated. It's slow. I hate it. <laughs> I, I really wish they went back to the old YouTube dashboard. I still use the old YouTube dashboard, but eventually it'll probably go away and I'll we'll have to use that bloated JavaScripty <laughs> front end that they have now. Yeah, Carol was, yeah, DT, YouTube is broken and bloated these days. <laughs> Read my mind. Leviticus, you know you want open box. We probably will run through an open box install this evening. Uh, one thing I need to fix is some of my camera resolutions here. Give me just a second, guys. For some reason, my camera does not look right on this scene, and I don't know why. Hmm, I tell you what. Maybe we can fix it? This is the kind of things that, you know, professionals probably wouldn't do during a live stream. Is you know, play with the scenes <laughs> in OBS while they were streaming. You know what? I'm just going to delete that scene. That's what I'm going to do. Be you sure? Yeah, we're going to delete that. The camera looks fine right here. So what I'm going to do is maybe I can copy. I'm probably going to end up ruining the stream here is what's going to happen. <laughs> okay, that looks good. All right, guys, YouTube, those of you in the chat, give me a yay or a nay. Is everything, am I still streaming? Typically, when I do this, cameras freeze, audio goes completely janky. Uh, I'm back to the, the chat for a second. Yeah, we're going to do some window managers, Carol. Uh, definitely, we're probably going to spend most of the time on window managers because the big desktop environments are pretty straightforward. Typically you install those with big meta packages like you just installed the full GNOME desktop and you know the typical GNOME suite of applications with just installing one package. So there's not much to those. Uh, we'll get into some of the more involved, you know, more minimal stuff. Because a lot of people that install Arch, things like Arch and things like Gentoo, typically want a more minimal system. So we're going to spend a little time on those. Because those require some real effort. I mean, what do you want for a panel, menu system, a sys tray, you know, things like that. Things you don't really have to think about if you install a full GNOME or full Plasma desktop. Yeah, Cam2, I'm watching on Arch, by the way. Good. Yeah, it was on YouTube homepage, but it showed it hadn't started, but it had. Yeah, again, YouTube is bad. Yeah, the fake VIP. Good timing. I've just installed Arch with i3 twice. I'm blind, so getting the speech for the Orca screen reader to work was interesting, but it works great now. Good to hear. All right. Yeah, that's sudo reboot. How you doing, Sir Reboot? <laughs> ben Fitzpatrick. Lamer Linux is also in the house. 
Yeah, quite a few of you guys are. We got nearly a hundred people. Again, for a, a bit of an impromptu stream. So this uh, video I did Sunday. So this past, let's uh, back up a minute. This past Saturday night on Big Daddy Linux Live, I I didn't join Big Daddy Linux Live on Saturday. I was working Saturday night, but I had heard when I got home that they had chosen to do Arch Linux as next week's distro challenge where, you know, for this week, everybody's going to install Arch Linux and then review it on next Saturday's Big Daddy Linux Live. And I thought, well, you know, a lot of people that watch Big Daddy Linux probably are not Arch users. They probably are Ubuntu users, you know, those kinds of distros, easy distros, Mint, elementary, uh, more noob friendly distros. So I wanted to create a video that was basically guaranteeing you guys <laughs> that I can get you through a Arch install. So I did it in VirtualBox. And the reason I did it in VirtualBox, well, two things. The VirtualBox I, a video I did on Sunday that is actually the way I installed Arch on my main production machine. The commands I showed you, the fact that I installed it in VirtualBox has changes nothing. Those exact, 100%, those exact commands work on my main production machine. So that's why I did it that way, is those are the commands I would have used if I had installed this on this machine. So I typically don't use uh, UFI, I do legacy uh, BIOS, you know, MBR. So that's why I did that on the vid video instead of UEFI. I didn't do a uh, wireless because this machine is plugged in. So again, I did it as I would have on my physical machine. I just didn't do it on my physical machine. I did it in a VM for two reasons. It's easier to record the install process in the VM. And I also did it in a VM because I wasn't for sure I was going to make today's video. But if I was, how am I going to show you how to install half a dozen different desktop environments if I installed this on physical hardware. It'd be tough, I, I'm, right? It would cause some problems, but doing this in a VM, all I have to do is I have the base install already in a VM. I'm going to clone it half a dozen times, so I'm already past the base install. And now I've got six different VMs to do whatever I want with. I'll throw GNOME on one, or KDE on one, or i3 on one, OpenBox on another, right? So VirtualBox does make some things a lot easier, but the VirtualBox install, even if you guys never try it on physical hardware, the other thing is I can't show you an Arch install on physical hardware on my machine. I mean, I could show it to you, but the exact commands I run on my machine would not be the exact commands you would run on your machine. For example, when you're making your partition tables, you know, SDA1, SDA2, maybe you're running NVMe drives, you know, the numbering and lettering system for your drives and partitions is going to be different. You can't just copy and paste where, you know, for people that are really scared of the Arch install, you could copy every single command I did on that VirtualBox video and get a VirtualBox install running. So the VM definitely makes things a bit easier. Oh, what scene did I switch to here? accidentally hit my ErgoDox keyboard. You guys have been asking me about the ErgoDox, loving it. Uh, the problem is these days, because I work on a computer a lot <laughs> these days, and my computer at work, of course, has a normal keyboard. You know, I spend like half my time on a typical QWERTY keyboard and then half my time on this ErgoDox keyboard with the, you know, split uh, keyboard layout and it is a little interesting when I come home and then jump on the ergo docs. It takes me a minute to adjust. Just a minute, though. The more I, I get used to switching between the two keyboards, the easier it gets, though. Back to the chat for a second. Yeah, I missed some of the chat. We got a, about 150 people here. We may go ahead and get started now that we've got a, a bit of a crowd. I didn't want to get started. And then people join late and wonder, you know, hey, what are you on now? <laughs> so... Now, Big Pod is in the chat. How you doing, Big Pod? Yeah, Hink. Paul, how you doing, Paul? Hey, hi, DT. Just completed an Arch Labs install in a VM. Yeah, Arch Labs is great. Great distro. Yeah, hi, DT. I recently hacked you. Your super secure, super complicated password is DT. Am I right? You know, a lot of people think it's DT, but what if I've been trolling you guys? What if it's TD? Maybe I did it in reverse, just to be really secure. 
yeah, do I have to supervise you guys so you guys don't start talking about running the rm-rf command? Yeah, we're not doing that today. Although I could, I, if you wanted to see me blow away a VM with rm-rf, we could do it. All right, guys. First things first, I'm going to pull up the Arch Linux wiki. So, you guys that ran through the install in a VM with me the other day, or maybe you guys know how to install Arch, but even if you not sure how to install or do anything on Arch, have the wiki, right? Even if I've installed Arch a couple of dozen times, I'm still going to have the Arch installation wiki up just in case. You never know what you might run into. It seems like some problem you never even thought of crops up from time to time. It's good to have the wiki up. Today I have the wiki up is because we're going to be installing maybe some stuff I don't know anything about. For example, GNOME. I have never in my life installed GNOME 3 on any machine I own, ever. Now, I, I kind of, I mean, I've seen GNOME and VMs and, you know, live USB sticks that I test out, of course, on the channel, but I've never actually, I, on a, Arch, a pure Arch machine, I've never installed GNOME. Have no idea what packages it's going to install. Same thing with Plasma. I'm a little more familiar with Plasma. But you, you guys know I, I n have never been a full desktop environment user, especially the big desktop environments. I'm kind of a complete noob when it comes to things like GNOME and Plasma. Now, once we get into if we want to do some of the more minimal window managers, you know, if I wanted to run through how to set up Xmonad and Arch for you guys, I'm good with that. So... I'm not exactly sure what I want to do. This is not going to be scripted in any way. To be honest, the uh, the full the base Arch install I did uh, Sunday night was not scripted. I mean, I pre-recorded that video, but it was pretty much even though I edited it, you know, to save some time on the video. It was me just I I got the ISO and just ran through my thing. You know, I've kind of done it a few times anyway. We typically don't script much of anything on this channel, so I've got the wiki open. All right, so first things first. So I've got a VM with the Arch Linux base install already done. Remember, I stopped after I did the base install. I set up a user. I called my user Derek, and I installed Xorg, the X graphical server, but I didn't install a desktop environment or any graphical programs past that. Why? So I could do this right here. Go to the machine tab here in VirtualBox, and there is clone let's clone that vm so i'm gonna do arch linux and you know what because i kind of fear it let's go ahead and get it out of the way i'm gonna name this one arch linux gnome we're gonna do a gnome install for sure and full clone so i'm gonna go ahead and clone that vm it may take a second actually with the thread ripper that i have in this machine that didn't take very long at all since it's uh, kind of quick i'm going to go ahead and clone again and let's do one you know what somebody mentioned it for sure let's go ahead and do open box why not so i'll go ahead and make at least two clones and do those we may do some others too of course i need to keep the base <laughs> install i need to make sure i don't do anything on that that way i can always keep coming back and cloning it so how do we install gnome in arch well again the arch wiki this is how you got you guys are often you know scared of how do i do this and how do i do that in arch i have no idea how to do i don't know what i'm doing with gnome you know what i'm just going to Search. Let's search for GNOME in the Arch Wiki. It's going to tell me what to do, right? So, installation. We have two different packages. We have GNOME, which contains the base GNOME desktop and a subset of well-integrated applications. So it's going to install your GNOME 3 desktop plus the standard GNOME applications, probably things like gedit and GNOME Terminal, GNOME System Monitor, GNOME Disk, things like that, I would imagine. Uh, Gnome Extra actually contains more packages. So the first Gnome actually contains Gnome Desktop and probably a minimal set of packages, just those required for Gnome. Gnome Extra contains further Gnome apps, including the Archive Manager, the Disk Manager, the Text Editor. Okay. So I'm going to tell you right now, the stream is going to buffer today. <laughs> because 
When we install the big desktop environments, especially, of course, you're pulling them down over the internet, right? It's going to the Arch repos and pulling all these packages down. That's going to cause the stream to suffer a little bit, but it shouldn't be too bad. So, first things first. Let me open up my new Arch Linux GNOME VM. And this may take a second to launch. I'm going to put this on a... All right, so here we are. This is where we left off the other day. Let me see if I can zoom in here. Give me just a second, guys. I want to make sure you guys can see what's going on here. So I'm going to switch to this scene, the same scene I had in Sunday's video, where we're zoomed in a little bit so you can see hopefully what I'm typing. So we're at a login. This machine has two users, root, which was there by default, and the user we created at the end of Sunday's video, which was Derek. I'm gonna log in as Derek, assuming I can type. All right, and then I need to give Derek's password. And now we are logged in as Derek. So we're gonna install the package gnome-extra. That's what the wiki says. I mean, this doesn't seem too hard, right? So sudo pacman dash capital S to install software and gnome dash extra. I have no idea what it's going to install, but it's going to give me a list of packages. All right, so it's going to install. Uh, it's got some extra dependencies. It's going to install. It's going to install Mahjong binds. It's going to install NetTool, of course. Uh, Quadra Pestle. That's another game. Gnome Multi-Rider. Gnome Recipes. Huh. That's interesting. Gnome Robots. Gnome Builder. Gnome Chess. Yeah, I want it all. I'm just going to choose the default, which is install everything. And then it's asking about some dependency problems. That we need some fonts. So these fonts are required. Noto, Bitstream, whatever. Whatever fonts are required. The Ubuntu font family is also in there. Yeah, give, give me whatever. Give me all of them. Actually, I'm going to go with the default, which was Noto. I'm going to go with the default for all these. I'm just going to hit Enter. And wow, it's going to install a million packages. <laughs> That's what I was afraid of. This is going to be a monster download. So this is a 2 gig download. I don't know how many packages. I didn't count them. Uh, again, because this is pulling things down over the internet, the stream may buffer. So this is going to be a few minutes because it's going to be a few minutes let's go back to the chat all right yeah so I, i'm gonna miss out on some of the chat sorry yeah thread, thread ripper made with heavy metal yeah gnome should install gvm and everything just like kde that's what i'm expecting uh it should install you know its own uh login manager and everything it's also one thing i know gnome requires Wayland. That's like, that's one of the dependencies. So it's going to install Wayland too, which, yeah. I mean, I, you don't have to use Wayland. When you go to the login manager, You can, the typical GNOME login, when you choose GNOME, logs you into GNOME with Wayland, but I think there's GNOME with Xorg as an option too, if you would prefer to log into GNOME using Xorg, which might be what you need to do if you were an NVIDIA user and use the proprietary NVIDIA drivers. They don't really work with Wayland, so. By the way, I did open a beer this evening, just getting home. It's very hot outside today. Wow, it's very warm. And it's warm in, in this room I'm recording in. This, uh, we, this stream, I don't know how long I'm going to stream today. We may not stream for very long. Uh, it's nearly 80 degrees in this room, and then I've got the uh, monitors and lights and everything going. So I, I record in a small room. A small room with all this computer equipment, it gets very hot in here, especially during the summer. I can't really keep it cool, though. I mean, I, I can't really add, like, an air conditioner or a fan or any, anything extra. I mean, this mic is so sensitive, just the central air in the house could get picked up, you know, putting, like, a big fan or something going in here. It's not an option. It would just be horrible for recording. So I'll deal with the heat for a little while. But uh, this is definitely not going to be a, a marathon stream this evening. The beer this evening is Modelo Especial. 
I needed something kind of light and refreshing, being, again, kind of a hot day. Didn't want anything heavy. Yeah, Exorg Master Race, yeah. There's really no reason to fool with uh, Wayland at this point. So, why are you even on YouTube right now? <laughs> Too much bloat, I would agree. Bloat is subjective, says Cletus. Well, of course. <laughs> Everything is subjective, to be, to be fair. Yeah, DT, who is your favorite metal band? Ooh. I mean, I don't listen to, I'm, I don't listen to a lot of metal. Uh, mostly what I listen to is classical music. Uh, being a classical musician, that's kind of what I listen to. If I'm in the car, I listen to, like, classic rock. I don't mind listening to any kind of music from the 60s, 70s, or 80s. Stick to those decades of music. Um... Uh, and re the reason I, I listen to those in the car rather than classical music, of course, classical music is the whole point of classical music is getting those really soft moments in music and then those really loud moments. And, you know, it just doesn't work in a car because a car is so noisy, you know. You got to listen to that at home, maybe with some good uh, headphones. But in the car, you just want some kind of pop music playing, you know. As far as metal bands, I mean, I like some of the classics. I mean, Metallica and, uh, you know, Megadeth, Slayer. Um, I've shown you guys, and why you might be asking this, typically when I bring up, like, uh, CMUS, you know, my terminal music player, you'll see uh, King Diamond in there. <laughs> One of my favorite metal musicians, King Diamond. If you guys don't know King Diamond... Uh, check him out. If you're looking for a good album of King Diamond to check out, if you've never heard any of his stuff, check out the uh, the album Them. T H E M. Them. He he's a little bit different kind of metal musician though, uh, because he creates these albums. The whole album is basically a story. It's like a horror story, and each track is like a chapter in the story. It's really good stuff. Plus, he's just a fantastic vocalist. Something you can't say with a lot, with a lot of metal uh, vocalists. But King Diamond is an amazing range. Yeah. Yeah, Megadeth is good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, I, I missed a ton of chat, guys. By the way, the uh, we're not even anywhere close to finishing the uh, the install. That's that's a rather large install, and the reason I chose GNOME first rather than KDE, we may we're probably not going to do KDE. I'll just tell you now, KDE is even bigger than GNOME. So that's <laughs> uh, the reason why, for example, Ben, if he's still in the chat, Ben Fitzpatrick, you know, when he does his Gen two installs, I know he never does Plasma. Because the compile times are just crazy long, right? Uh, they would probably be crazy long with GNOME, too, just not as bad as Plasma. But you'd probably want to do something like XFCE, maybe Mate. Really, something like LXQt would be better. <laughs> or just go real minimal. Yeah, do Openbox, i3, things like that. Yeah, are you going with encryption? No, we did not go with encryption, and we're we're kind of past that point. <laughs> you know, uh, somebody was asking in the chat. So anything that I didn't do to this point, for example, you know, if you guys, I, I did a legacy bio, BIOS instead of UEFI on the previous video. I did a wired Ethernet connection rather than wireless. You know, if you guys want to do disk encryption, if you guys, you know, I I made my file system extend for if you wanted to look into something crazy like ZFS on Linux. I mean, read the wiki. You know, I can't, there's, you, you can do anything with Arch. Because of that, the possibilities are so endless. Uh, I can't show you everything, but I don't even want to try. I want you guys to get used to going to the wiki. I don't want to deprive you of the joy of reading the Arch wiki. The wiki's that good, by the way. You can find anything you want to know about Linux in the Arch Wiki. Not even kidding. So, still waiting on G GNOME. We installed the GNOME extra package in Arch. Those of you that are just arriving, 
Um, that's the only thing we've done. I logged into my base uh, Arch installed and, and installed GNOME Dash Extra, which is like the full GNOME install, and it's going to take forever. It's a two gig download. Back to the chat for a second. Yeah, Budgie is insanely bloated, says Alan. Yeah, I wouldn't choose Budgie either. I love the Budgie desktop, but uh, yeah, it does have quite a bit to it too. Although somebody was asking about Arch with Budgie, yeah, I'm probably not going to do Budgie. I probably won't do anything as heavy as GNOME. Certainly, we're not doing Plasma today. It's, the downloads are just going to take a long time, and it's going to cause the, the stream to buffer. I haven't been monitoring the stream, by the way. I hope, hope the stream looks good. When you're downloading software from a package manager, uh, just a pro tip, those of you that do live streaming on things like YouTube and Twitch, don't try it. <laughs> on your host machine or in a VM or whatever, it just sucks up all your bandwidth. So Big Pod is asking, hey, DT, what are you talking about? Uh, I'm not sure that was from a few minutes ago. There's no telling what I was talking about, Big Pod. <laughs> uh, as far as what's up, how am I doing? Uh, just fine. Work today. Just got off work. Uh, just relaxing. I thought, you know, I, I had a couple hours free this evening. Why not live stream? Just imagine if the Arch Wiki didn't exist. Well, the good thing uh, that was from Cooper Jan, if the Arch Wiki didn't is, exist, guess what? We have something really just as good called the Gen 2 Wiki. You should have both those bookmarked. Bookmark the Arch Wiki, bookmark the Gen 2 Wiki. Even if you've never run Arch or never run Gen 2 in your life, have those two wikis bookmarked. Because most of the information in there is like general information that is applic applicable. <clears throat> no matter what Linux distribution you're running. So, Croft, will you review Clear OS? It's, to be honest, it's not something that interests me because I would probably never run Clear OS. Uh, it's made by Intel. Just saying. <laughs> so, uh, Dutch says, what is your favorite drink? So, if we're being... Just completely broad and random. Uh, you're talking alcoholic beverages, or are we just talking about just any beverage in general? Uh, you guys know, typically, early in the day, and even later in the afternoons and evenings, I drink a lot of coffee. If you're talking about, you know, adult beverages, uh, beer is typically what I stick to. I don't typically do much hard liquor. Yeah, DT, I have like seven different desktop environments on my Arch. That is very bloated and dangerous, Big Pod. That's why I love being able to clone these VMs so I don't have to do that. <laughs> because if I installed like the full GNOME and the full KDE and then the full XFCE and then, you know, Budgie and whatever, Mints or Cinnamon or what, it would just be... I would have like 3,000 packages on one installation. The updates would be insane. You may eventually break something. Yeah. Clear Linux is made by Intel. Clear OS is different. Oh, okay. See, I wasn't aware there was something different. I know Clear Linux, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I might look at it, but I'm not really interested. <laughs> Like, I would never run it, to be honest, so. Kind of hard to look at something I know I would never run. And then, you know, take a look at it, and then, hey, you guys might love it, but. If you tried Clear Linux Server today, you kind of liked it. Okay. By the way, I am not using Arch, says Film Wasteland. That's too bad. You don't know what you're missing. And I, let me show you what you're missing right now. All right. Still updating. Okay. Oh, wow. I timed that just right. Wow. And that took forever for the GNOME-extra package. Uh, did it install a login manager with that? It probably it, it installed so much crap. I, I'm sure it installed the GNOME's uh, display manager there. So let's reboot and see what happens. Why not? I don't think I have to do anything else. I probably don't have to enable any services or anything with uh, systemd. Let's just do a pseudo reboot and 
see what happens. The worst that can happen is we don't have anything that <laughs> loads up. But that's fine too. All right, let's log in again. So, doesn't appear we have a login manager. Let's see if start X does anything. My goodness. All right. So, what is the GNOME login manager? GDM? Let's see if it's installed. I'm going to do a where is GDM? Well, it's here. So, why didn't it launch? Do I have to? We may have to pull up the Arch Wiki page. Let me just try to run it. Uh, command not found. System enable GD. Oh, yeah, system CTL. Let's go ahead. Well, we have to do that as root. So sudo system CTL. So we do, we're going to enable this service with the systemd init system. So system CTL enable GDM. Of course, you have to do this as root. Failed to enable unit. Unit GDM.service does not exist. Okay. Well, we may have to read the wiki, but again, this is why we pulled it up. You guys got any suggestion, suggestions in the chat? Feel free. Again, I've never installed GNOME on Arch. That's one of the reasons why I pulled it up. To start GNOME at boot, enable gdm.service. It says it right here in the wiki. And that's kind of what I thought. Why did it not... I mean, would it let me just launch no I mean sudo system enable gdm dot service let's add the dot service since I didn't add it no hmm you know what let me just switch over to the root user see if that's a problem maybe Derek just he doesn't maybe we got some permissions screwed up or something We're going to work this out, though. Now, even the root user can't enable that service. The service doesn't exist. Hmm. Yeah, DT, I think you need to install the GNOME package, not only the GNOME Extra package. Well, I would have thought they would have installed that with it. I would assume the base package would be a dependency of installing the Extra package. But you may be right. Let's see. There is stuff to install, so you are right. Oh yeah, this is stuff we haven't, yeah, absolutely. So that's the problem. <laughs> ah, yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah, this is installing SSH, and WPA supplicant, and yeah, a ton of stuff we need. I mean, this is like really basic stuff too. Okay, so another big download. So we wait again. This is why we do it live, though. And I don't mind, uh, you know, stumbling around here. Again, I've never installed GNOME on Arch or any minimal distro because I want to see you guys see me fail. Uh, because what do I do? Well, I'm, I'm going to dig through the Arch wiki and figure it out. Like, there's no way we're not getting GNOME up and running. There's no way. It's impossible. And I want you guys, if you fear Arch or you fear the command line, I want you guys to get used to that. You know what? We're, we're going to work it out. I always have that, you know, I, I don't ever really run into a problem that I can't work out. Now, there, I do run into problems occasionally that I can work out, but I know it's going to take me longer than it's worth my time to do. Sometimes I'll just format and reinstall. But like 99.9% .9 of the things that you come across, the little paper cuts that annoy you with Linux, you can, you can fix the problem. You, most of them you can fix the problem within seconds or a couple of minutes uh, with the right command. In this case, the problem I ran into is I just didn't read the wiki close enough. I go back to the wiki. I bet it told me if I go back to the GNOME page. 
say I, the GNOME Extra contains like the extra packages, but I needed to install the base GNOME package first. Say I thought the GNOME Extra, if I installed that, I assumed the GNOME base package was a dependency, so I thought it would pull both of them down by just choosing the extra package. That wasn't the case. Now, I should have read that more closely. And reading a little bit here, by the way, I mentioned that GNOME was going to install Wayland because it's a dependency. That is correct, looking at the, uh, the wiki page here. So I kind of already knew that. Any of the modern uh, GNOME distros, like Fedora, even Ubuntu with GNOME, yeah, they have Wayland on it. Let's see, back to the chat, because we are going to have to wait a few more minutes now for GNOME. Yeah, we're definitely not going to do Plasma. Uh, pla the Plasma downloads are going to be even bigger than the GNOME. Yeah, so watch DT's review of Regolith. It is really cool, but not that noob friendly. Actually, that Regolith is not that bad. It's an Ubuntu install. You in, you can have it installed in 10 minutes. Uh, and then it's got i3 on it. I mean, i3 already configured for you, basically. I mean, you I probably want to change some things, but yeah. I wouldn't say reg Regolith is non-noob friendly. I, seems pretty straightforward to me. Big Pod. Basically, it is automatically installed, and if you uninstall it, GNOME goes as well. Okay. I think you have to disable bloat with system CTL. Yeah, Debian is good, but who doesn't want Franken Debian? I'm not sure what Franken Debian is, but Deb Debian's great. If you're looking for stable, if you're looking for a server distro, yeah, Debian all day long. Love Arch. Arch is not a server distro. <laughs> By the way, I use Linux from scratch, says Cletus. Wow. Uh, Vito, your thoughts on Nix OS? Ran through an install of it a long time ago, actually on the channel, early days of the channel. I had no idea what Nix OS was. Seriously, I went and grabbed the ISO and read nothing about it. And I tried the, to install it, and it took me like three hours to install. I got through the install. <laughs> but that was like the dumbest thing I've ever done, is try to install a distro without having any idea what it was about. And NixOS is not one of those distros. Like the install is like much more complicated than like the Arch install. <laughs> And I didn't realize that until I jumped in it, and I was like, ooh, wow, this is... Okay, we ran into a problem here. Errors occurred. No packages were upgraded. So what was the problem? Hmm. Good thing we cloned the VM. Failed to commit transaction. You know what? Let's run that again, and let me actually watch what, what happened here. Obviously, it's pulling down almost a gig of stuff, but... Ah, there's a problem with uh, the mirrors. Okay. Well, I've got internet here. Obviously, I'm streaming live. I can preview it, so we have internet. Is there a problem with the internet in the VM? No, we can ping Google. Let's just uh, do a quick update. So I'm going to run sudo pacman dash syyu. We clearly, I mean, it's syncing the repos, so clearly, internet is working. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe it didn't like the mirrors I chose on uh, Sunday's video. Let's try to install the base GNOME package again. This time it looks like it's uh, it's just checking the uh, the keys. Yeah, so it already downloaded the packages, so it's just installing them. We didn't have to wait for the the lengthy downloads again. Yeah, I don't know what the problem was, but it looks like updating first and then running the 
Pac-Man dash S GNOME worked. I'm not seeing any errors. And we're almost done. Just get through the last couple of packages and we're good. All right. And I'm going to run this command reboot. We're uh, root, so I don't have to sudo reboot. Just reboot. And let's see. All right. I'm going to log back in as, you know what, I'll log back in as root. That way I don't have to keep using sudo because there is a couple of other things I need to do. Actually, one thing I should have done before reboot was probably enable the GDM service. All right. So... Can I just launch GDM? I got a black screen. <laughs> the cursor is not blinking. That's not a good sign. This is why we do everything live. <laughs> All right. Catch up with the chat here. Yeah, did I miss anything? Better try Control-Alt-Delete. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to Control-Alt-Delete this one. One thing I need to do, though. I blame GNOME. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to kill the VM. And I'm going to restart it. So we know that there's no point in trying to launch GDM. It's not going to launch just from running it. <laughs> uh, thanks for the super jet there, Robo. Derek has broken it again. Yeah. Uh, don't worry. We're going to get there. So, let's go ahead and enable GDM. So, system CTL enable GDM as root. If you did this as a regular user, you'd have to sudo. All right. Now let's reboot. Even though I'm pretty sure we're not going to get GDM to launch. This may be a problem with the VM. Also, it's probably could be a problem with Wayland in the VM too. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. We've got it. All right, but still, this you can see how the VM is kind of wigging out. The VM probably is not crazy about GNOME and or Wayland. I'm going to choose GNOME on Xorg just for purposes of this VM. VirtualBox probably will handle an Xorg session a lot better than a Wayland session. And there we go. And now, what I'm going to do is see if I can control F for full screen in, in VirtualBox. Yes, awesome. Let me switch views. All right, so that was it. We needed to install two packages, GNOME and GNOME-Extras. Then you needed to enable GDM, which is the login manager, with sudo systemctl enable gtm then reboot so sudo reboot <laughs> and then you get to your login manager and you can log in now because we installed the full gnome what exactly is that on arch i have no idea <laughs> this will be the first time i've ever taken a look at it exerciser i've never heard of that in my life uh the avahi server Gnome Books, Gnome Boxes, Gnome Builder, Gnome Calendar, Cheese for your webcam, then a ton of games. We have, what, Chess and Quassel and four in a row, five or more. Of course, you have, you know, G-Edit, a uh, bunch of Python stuff, but you probably, we might have had a lot of Python stuff on the system anyway as part of the base package. Uh, have some cute stuff. Well, that's interesting. Uh I'm not sure what pulled down the, the cute libraries. Uh, Multi-Rider, Gnome Maps, 
GNOME recipes, GNOME software, Sudoku, Simple Scan, uh, the text editor is gedit, of course. Vim, I installed. So I installed that when we did the base package. GNOME Videos, which is Totem. GNOME Weather. Web, which is the Epiphany web browser. We have this subcategory here of utilities, by the way, which is the Archive Manager, which in GNOME is File Roller of the GNOME Calculator, the GNOME Character Map, GNOME Dictionary, GNOME Disk, uh, Document Viewer, which is what in Events in GNOME, and the System Monitor, the Terminal, GNOME Tweaks, Screenshot. Okay. So pretty much everything you want. <laughs> the only thing, like if you did this, I mean, it, obviously it's bloated. It's got the full kitchen sink. The only thing I think a normal user would immediately be looking for is another browser other than the Epiphany web browser. The Epiphany web browser is horrible. So you would probably immediately sudo pacman dash capital S Firefox or Chromium or go in the AUR and look for, you know, proprietary browsers like Chrome or Vivaldi. You probably want something other than Epiphany. I can't imagine anybody really just loves using the Epiphany web browser. But that is... That's GNOME on Arch. Full GNOME. Now it's vanilla GNOME, but, you know, with the full GNOME suite of applications. Very easy, right? We basically ran two commands, well, the two commands to install really could have just been one command, sudo pacman dash capital S gnome and then space gnome dash extras, those two packages, then enable GDM with systemd reboot. That's actually pretty straightforward. Very straightforward to get something like GNOME, and KDE is going to be very similar. KDE is very easy to get up and running. They just take a, a while to download and install all those packages. You know, it's a ton of stuff. Because they're full desktop environments. And by full desktop environments, I mean they throw everything you could possibly want in there. Not just like the graphical programs you would use every day, but things like, you know, the background stuff that's running in the background, your SysTrace stuff, notifications, um, you know, the notifications that appear on your screen. Things like the policy kit, you know, things like that. Probably all the nice goodies like you expect to mount USB drives and things like, you know, probably all, all that stuff is going to work by installing full GNOME or full KDE. Where when we do something more minimal, like we might do here in just a second, we, we have to install every single individual package we're going to need for everything we do. Back to the chat for a second. Yeah, the Brave browser, yeah. I've never tried it, but it's probably better than the Epiphany browser. I can't imagine too many browsers being worse than Epiphany. I know I'm, I'm throwing a lot of shade on Epiphany today, but... Yeah. Sibirin. I'm using Pale Moon. Yeah, Pale Moon. It's not horrible. Yeah, so Peter, is, you look at the GitHub, GitLab pages from DT and Luke, they have a few configs already. Yeah, so the configs for like my open box and Qtile installs and Xmonad, things like that, all some i3, make things easy because I don't have to worry about configuring anything. I install i3 right now, go to my GitLab page, clone my i3 repository, boom, done. Thanks for the super chat there. So, uh, yeah. George, just showing some love to DT for the fun vids. By the way, I bootstrapped Arch with Xmonad. <laughs> and he loved it. Nice. So much so, it will replace my Debian testing daily driver, especially Pac-Man. I'll still keep Red Hat Enterprise Linux for development, though. Well, of course. Great that you, you went with Xmonad. Xmonad is just such a nice window manager. It's one of those that I keep coming back to it year after year after year. I think I mentioned, I think the first time I ever tried Xmonad was like in 2009. And it's one of those, I, I run it for a couple of months, move on to something else. But I always keep coming back to it. And every time I keep coming back to it, it's like 
it's like the best window manager ever. <laughs> I always, I don't know why I just don't stay on it permanently. I hop too much. I'm one of the, you know, I don't distro hop as much as I window manager hop and I need to just settle into something. Back to the chat for a second. Yeah, I miss a lot of the chat, guys. I'm sorry. I know there's a ton of you guys watching, and the chat's busy today. If I, you guys say something and I miss it, I do apologize, especially once I get into the uh, installations that are coming up. I know I'm going to have to ignore the chat for a bit. Yeah, DT, I stole your poly bar. Yeah, it, it, I stole my poly bar too. So <laughs> that poly bar config started life as basically somebody else's config. I think it's actually the default poly bar config. I just added my little widgets to it, like the power line stuff, and that was just a quick and dirty hack. It's actually not that complicated to do. It wasn't anything I spent. I, I might have spent 10 minutes on that config. Yeah, so which version of GNOME? Well, we'll check it out in just a second. Uh, that w Who was that asking that? I missed it. Mitchell, yeah. I see Mr. Big Daddy Linux himself is in the chat. How you doing, Rocco? I'm not sure how we have 268 people watching and only 58 likes. Like that smash button, please. Thank you, Rocco. It's a good reminder. All right, let's go to the this scene so we can see the full desktop with a 1080 resolution here. So in Arch, actually in GNOME, what is the key binding to bring up the terminal? In most distros control alt T, but I'm pretty sure that's not going to be the case here in Arch. Yeah, or in GNOME 3, I think the standard is what super T. Now that doesn't work either. Alt T. Okay, just super by itself at least gets me this dash here. I'm just going to type term and hit enter. <laughs> One of you guys in the chat, let me know the hotkey to get to the terminal so I can do that a little more quickly next time. Wow, the terminal. Why is the terminal taking so long to, to launch? Did it install the terminal as a snap? I, I kid, guys. <laughs> Snaps are not enabled by default on Arch. I may enable them, actually, but I'm not sure what went on there. But the terminal did not want to launch. Why is the terminal not launch? Yeah, that's another thing. Uh, if for some reason the GNOME terminal is boogered up here, what other terminal options do I might have to drop back down into a TTY prompt and install something like Xterm, you know, just to have a terminal. Yeah, GNOME terminal is not launching for me. And there's, I don't think I have any other options. Ah, you know what? I don't know why. I, I'm so not used to living in a graphical environment. Like I literally, until I just saw it on the desktop, I had never even considered well, I could go to the GNOME Software Center and install another terminal. <laughs> like I'm sitting here, I got to drop to a TTY prompt. No, I don't. Let's go to the Software Center. Is Xterm available? Really? Can you give me any terminal? Is ter Termite is in the Arch repos. Do we have to sync the repos or something? What's going on here? FlatHub is enabled. The GNOME shell. Okay. All right, guys, why is it not showing me what I want? Developer tools. I'm just looking for any terminal, any terminal emulator. Give me something. I see Emacs. I don't want Emacs, though. Sublime text. That's proprietary garbage. Why is that here? Oh, we have the uh, flat packs enabled. That's why. Uh, we probably should also en enable the AUR at some point if this was a real install and I was going to live on it. I am not sure. Talix, is that here? Talix drop down? Yep, yeah, you know what? Let's just. I might go with that. How about RXVT? No. Yeah, <laughs> those of you that just got here in the last couple of minutes. Yeah, isn't GNOME Terminal installed by default? Yeah, it won't launch. I don't have another terminal emulator without dropping to the uh, TTY. I was trying not to do that. 
By the way, uh, I got sidetracked. I, I know you guys left a couple of uh, super chats. I'm sorry about that. Uh, Ray, <laughs> appreciate the super chat. I'm a big fan. Love your vids. I'm an Arch user, so thanks for covering the Arch distro. Th appreciate that. And Joel, appreciate your, your super chat, Joel. Much appreciated. All right. I can't believe I can't find terminal emulators in the GNOME Software Center. I mean, this is like... These terminal emulators I was searching for exist on the Arch repos. I don't know why they're not showing up when I search for, for anything. Most of this stuff, too, that I'm looking at here, this looks like stuff that's mainly flat pack stuff. So, I mean, there's a lot of proprietary stuff in here. Ah. One of you other guys caught it, too. DT, the GNOME Software Center only has flat packs. Well, we got to drop to a TTY prompt then. It only has flat packs. Uh, you know what? Let me get a different keyboard. I'm going to need a, a keyboard other than my ErgoDox. I don't have function keys set on my ErgoDox. I do, but they exist on a different layer where I have to hold a button to get function keys and I can't control alt and then whatever function key all at the same time it just doesn't work uh, but I can all right there we go so we gotta log in I might as well log in as root since I gotta install software anyway all right, we're logged in as the root user, Pac-Man, dash capital S, and Termite, because I know it's there, and it's a nice terminal emulator. I don't know why GNOME Terminal is not launching. So, all right, we got it. Let's see if I can get back to where we need to be. Uh, come on, virtual box. Quit messing with me. You know what? We'll just reboot anyway. Give me a second to uh, read the chat. Yeah, am I the only one that feels handicapped in Linux without a working terminal? No. I felt completely naked just then without a terminal. I guess it's crazy. Because w without GNOME Terminal, we haven't installed anything else other than GNOME, right? So there's no terminal emulators at all on this system without GNOME. And I can't believe the graphical software center only has flat packs. That's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> like, that is just crazy when you think about it. All right, appreciate the uh, super chat there, George. Am I the only one? Yeah, I got you. We got Michael also as well. Check your language in GNOME settings. If it isn't set, GNOME terminal will not open. Okay, we will check that. Good tip. Now, Tobias, I love this channel. Both fun and informative. Yeah, we try to be informative every now and then. I can, we definitely have fun. So, what session are we logging into? Xorg? Okay, making sure it remembered it. I wasn't for sure if it would remember it every time or not. All right, so now we'll check the language settings in a second, but let's see, let's make sure we actually do have a terminal we can use now. All right, there's Termite. I forget why I even wanted a terminal <laughs> like 15 minutes ago, but I have one now. Boy, that font is really small. Anyway, let's see if we can get the uh, GNOME terminal working. So what was the suggestion? Check your language in GNOME settings. Okay. If we go back to the GNOME settings, can I just type settings and it find it? I think it will. This is so odd, me playing with GNOME. Like, I never... <laughs> I know so little about GNOME. I need to have Rocco, Big Daddy Linux, on speed dial anytime I use GNOME. Because I know he's a GNOME master, but wow, I, I'm like a fish out of water with it. Ah, unspecified language. Nice. Select the language. Uh, there's nothing to select. Did we not... 
Did we booger the install, the base install, to where I don't have a language to select here? We may have. Obviously, searching is going to come up with nothing. I thought we set the language, though. On my base install, I may have missed a step. <laughs> but this is why we do everything live. And so when we miss things, we have to go back and fix it. And you see, I'm, I'm not that concerned about it. We're going to get it working. By the way, this was with GNOME, which I said was going to be one of the easier uh, desktops because of the big meta package that just pulls everything down. You don't have to do a ton of minimal configuring like every single piece of your desktop. Just wait if I, if I do something with OpenBox here in a minute. Kind of dreading that. Okay, back to the chat. I missed a ton of chat, guys. I, I apologize. Yeah, you need... GNOME package kit plugin for the software center to work. Well, you guys got so many tips. I'm not sure if we can actually cover all this today. But since you brought it up, let me get, pull up Termite again. That was a good suggestion there. Pull up the terminal. Make sure I type Termite because some GNOME terminal is not going to work. So we're going to do... Ah, uh, I lost it in the chat. Uh... One of you guys had a good suggestion, and I was going to go ahead and install that package. Oh well. Let's fix the language. So, you guys remember the install video I did Sunday, slash Etsy, slash locale. Uh, we'll edit it, and you know what? I installed Vim. I'm comfortable with Vim. I, I tried to do everything in Nano the other day, but I don't particularly care for it. What is it? Etsy slash locale dot gen. Somebody help me if that's not the case. No, it's here. This font is incredibly small. You guys are not going to see it, but just know this. Every language is here. Every line is commented out, though. I need to uncomment one of these lines. Pretty sure it's toward the bottom. So Shift G, capital G, gets you to the bottom of the document in Vim. And I want, no, that's not what I want. It's in the middle of the document. Where is it? Here it is, EN underscore US. Yeah, I thought I did this the other day. I must not have though. Clearly I didn't because it's not working. All right, I'm not going to be able to write this though. I gotta open that as sudo. <laughs> hmm. And of course I have to type it right too. So sudo vim slash etsy slash locale dot gen. I know you guys can't see this. I can't make the font bigger in termite. Termite, to change the font, it, it has a config file. I'd have to go find the config file. I know where it's at. But really what I should have done is installed a easier to configure terminal emulator. But hopefully GNOME terminal works after I uncomment this one line here. Really it doesn't matter which one I uncomment. I just need to uncomment something because right now we just don't have a terminal emulator alright so I'm gonna write and quit and and now I'm going to try to launch uh, I launched termite again because gnome terminal is just called terminal in gnome that's horrible <laughs> the generic names and termite of course is very similar so make sure that we get that terminal. And it's still not going to launch it. Even after editing that line. Oh, by the way, yeah. Thank you for repeating that. GNOME software dash package kit dash plugin for the software center. 
I think you forgot the slash Etsy vconsole.conf. Uh. All right. I must have. I did try to rush through that video the other day for sake of time. I mean, I spent almost four hours on that video <laughs> for about editing and everything. Uh, I thought I hit every step, but I, I must have missed something. Clearly, I missed the language step because it was definitely commented out. All right, you need to type locale gen after. Oh, of course. There we go. Now, let's see if we can get the GNOME terminal. Hmm, still not. What other steps did we miss? All right, so I uncommented the line we needed in slash Etsy slash locale dot gen. I ran locale dot gen. What am I missing here, guys? Type sudo. Exclamation, exclamation. It automatically, well, I, I'm aware of that. Uh, I just need the command. Echo language. Man, I, I know I... I I know I did that, but I must not have. Well, let's see. I'm going to sudo vim slash etsy slash locale dot conf. Yeah, I've got that lang equals en underscore us dot utf dash eight. Hmm. Edit the Etsy vconsole.conf. Yeah, let's try that. I'm going to sudo vim slash Etsy slash vconsole.conf. And of course, there's nothing here. Um. All right, guys. What goes in the V console? Does that just need to be the Lang line? Of course, why am I asking the chat? Of course, the point was pulling up the Arch Wiki, right? I wonder if I could just type V console in the Arch Wiki and would it magically have something come up? It does. It has some stuff coming up in the Cyrillic alphabet, though. It's not going to help me. <laughs> yeah. DT and settings, you still have, ah. Uh, of course. Language. Uh, well, I still can't. See, language is still unspecified, but I don't think I can change it. Pretty sure I can't change it just yet. Applications, that's not what I wanted. Region and language. Language. Language English. It's there. Everything looks good in GNOME settings. I think, you know what? I think we have everything straight. But I don't know why. I don't know why. Uh, there it is. That's weird. It's working now, guys. I was getting frustrated with that. Because really, after uncommenting that line in slash Etsy uh, slash locale.gen and then running the locale gen command, that really should have been enough. But you have to go back in the GNOME settings, change the language there. Yeah, somebody in the chat also said reboot. Reboot probably would have been a good idea too. As a matter of fact, that fixes most problems, it seems. You'd be surprised how many problems I've had on Linux. I mean, problems I spent hours trying to solve. Reboot the machine and boom. <laughs> uh, Big Pod, I spammed the correct answers for like a minute. Really? 
V console should be the keyboard layout. Well, that's great. I don't think I need it. I know I set the keyboard layout on the video the other day. Did I? Maybe I didn't. Maybe I cut it out of the video. I thought I set all this on the video the other day, too. But clearly, I messed something up. Try launching GNOME Terminal and Termite, and it will tell you what is going on. Well, GNOME Terminal opens now. I just clicked on it in the... Uh, and the good old dash thing. So it's fixed now. Uh, we better leave Gnome behind since uh, we we're breaking things and we spent a lot of time. We spent over, over an hour on what I thought seriously would be like five minutes. Just throwing Gnome on Arch. Really should have been. But a lot of this is because I was trying to get Gnome Terminal. I was determined to get GNOME Terminal working. We didn't do the language settings right on the base install. My bad. The desktop needs a conky. Well, of course, we could do that. But you know what we're going to do? And because I mess messed up the lang language setting, instead of using the clone I made earlier, I'm going to go ahead and install OpenBox on this VM. Now, how would you do this? Well, you know what? Let's drop to a TTY. All right, so imagine this is the base install of Arch. We're just starting fresh. I didn't install GNOME. You did the base install. You want to do window manager only. What window manager do you want to do? Uh, I'll tell you what, guys. For the next 30 seconds, spam the chat. Pick a window manager. <laughs> you guys decide the window manager I don't care pick one it's got to be something reasonable like, like it can't be something that hasn't been updated in 20 years we're not doing a CDE uh, window maker oh well somebody of course immediately somebody says window maker and then of course we're going to get that one troll that says rat poison alright I see a lot of open box but it's all from big pod a lot of i3 that's shocking. Arch with i3. Wow. Can you guys be a little more original? <laughs> I guess not. A lot of Xmonad thrown in there. Awesome. Okay, that's enough, guys. All right, that's, that's out of control. All right, so let me get back to... All right. Well, that was tough. A lot of DWM in there, too. Wow, a lot of you guys want the dynamic window manager? Uh, wow. You know what? I'm going to go with OpenBox. I was tempted there for a second to go with DWM or i3, but OpenBox is intriguing because we it, we'll get into a lot more educational stuff with OpenBox because OpenBox is so minimal. You kind of have to add a lot to make it usable. So, first things first is obviously you have to install OpenBox. So, sudo pacman dash capital S. I'm going to install OpenBox. OpenBox is just a window manager. As assuming we this was a base Arch install, and assuming you've already installed Xorg, so assume the graphical server is already there. I wouldn't have a terminal emulator, so other than OpenBox, I would install some terminal emulator of my choice, so termite. Termite's already there though. We'll skip that step. We also have GNOME terminal also on here because we did the GNOME install. Uh, what else do you need? We need a text editor. Now if you have a terminal, you have both Nano and Vim available to you. If you want a graphical text editor of some kind, you might want to throw that in there. I'll, I'll do one just for sake of this video. How about Genie? I like Genie. You need a file manager. Do you want a graphical file manager? If you don't, I mean, you could do a terminal file manager, but let's assume you want a graphical one. I'm going to do PC Man FM. Some of you may prefer something like Thunar, the XFCE file manager, or Space FM. The sky's the limit on file manager. Pick one. What else do we need? We have to have a web browser. Firefox, of course, makes sense. So I've got my window manager which we have to have. A text editor is kind of nice. A file manager is kind of nice. A web browser is really a must. 
I could just install that and I could do I could get some stuff done. But you know, while I'm already here, we need a panel or a dock. By default, OpenBox does not have a panel or a dock or anything. So I like the Tent 2 panel. You guys know I, I install Tent 2 on all my open box installs. If you prefer something a little nicer, <laughs> LX panel, the LXDE panel works fine as a standalone package. It doesn't really have any dependencies. LX panel would work if you prefer a dock, uh, plank, or docky, or you know anything like that would work. Just pick one. All right, so now I have a panel. What else do I need? I probably will eventually want to have wallpaper on my screen. Again, this is stuff you didn't even have to think about with GNOME. GNOME just draws wallpaper on your screen, right? OpenBox does not. OpenBox, why would it draw wallpaper? OpenBox is a window manager. It is the border around a window that places this program on the screen. That's all it does. That's its only job. You want wallpaper, you better find another program to draw that wallpaper. I use nitrogen. It's one I like. If you prefer something a little more minimal, FEH for a command line utility to set your wallpaper. What else do we need? Are there any other pain points that we're going to have here? If I hadn't installed GNOME, I would need to install a login manager, like DM. I'm not going to install this because GDM is already here <laughs> because we installed GNOME. But if I hadn't installed GNOME, like DM would be necessary. All right, let's go with this for now. There's going to be more stuff we're going to end up needing to install because it's just not going to be, I mean, you can't install just seven or eight programs and <laughs> think you're going to have a great desktop ex experience. There's going to be more stuff we're going to need. Back to the chat for a second. Yeah, LX Appearance. Yep, we definitely need LX Appearance so we can set our GTK themes. By the way, we shouldn't really have any GTK themes. Well, we, we do because I installed GNOME. <laughs> but had we done this on just the base install, I wouldn't even have any themes to worry about changing. Uh, G-Edit? No, I'm not going to do G-Edit for a text editor. It's okay. I have G-Edit, obviously, on the I have still have all those GNOME packages here. But again, I'm just asking you guys for you know, to su suspend reality for a minute and pretend like I didn't go through that GNOME install earlier. Yeah, I, I could install the NNN file manager. What a great name for a file manager. NNN. I just call it triple N or, or the N's. Midnight Commander. Yeah, Midnight Commander is a better name. Both fine file managers. Of course, you guys know I use VIFM, but I'm not going to do that here on this video. DT, can you recommend any Wayland window managers? No. <laughs> The only uh, GNOME, I mean, if you want a desktop environment slash window manager that kind of works with Wayland, I mean, the the people behind GNOME, Red Hat, they're kind of pushing Wayland in a big way. I mean, it's with System D, that's all that's kind of just tied in together. If you're talking about minimal window managers, Sway, which is the i3 clone written basically to run on Wayland, it's out there, but but why? You know, why? why? Why do you want your tiling window manager to run on Wayland? What advantage does that offer you over Xorg? Uh, I, if you're interested in, in just the technology behind it, or maybe you're a Wayland dev, maybe, but just your typical user, um, it would be kind of pointless to introduce all that pain and suffering in your life, really for no reason. All right, so we've gone through the install here, and I'm going to sudo reboot and get back to the login manager. And at the login manager now, open box, of course, will be an option. Yeah, they, he wants DWM ported to Wayland. The suckless guys are porting DWM to Wayland. That's kind of cool. I'm kind of worried about some of the old school tiling window managers, how they're going to make the transition. For example, Xmonad. Xmonad. Think about that name. X in the name. For Xorg, of course. Uh, have they even considered what's, what's going to happen moving to Wayland? By the way, I just chose 
open box here, the little cog wheel, open box instead of GNOME. And let's log into open box on a freshly installed Arch Linux. Okay. That's open box. It launched immediately. This is open box. Now, if you've never seen this before, and, and most people will think this, wow, my computer just crashed because I hit enter, you know, at the login screen and nothing happened. You know, the screen just went black or in this case, gray. Uh, no, that's open box. This is your desktop. Again, open box is just a window manager, all right? No panels, no whiz bang effects and anything. It's just a window manager. The only thing you have is a right click menu, which thankfully is populated with some stuff. Most of this stuff you don't have though. This is, it's hard coded in the menu, things like GVim and Emacs, Gedit, Kate. You know, it's assuming you probably have one of these text edit editors installed and available to you. But in the case of this base install Arch Linux, I have none of these. I didn't install any of this. Gedit might be here because of the GNOME install we went through. Uh, under internet, it probably lists a few popular web browsers and things. Now, luckily, we did install Firefox. Be sure on these minimal installs, three things you really need. Like, af other than installing your Xorg server, your window manager, and a login manager if you need it, you need a web browser, a text editor, and a terminal. Like, that's just my checklist. That's the first thing I always install. Web browser, text editor, and terminal. If you have those three things, you're good. If you don't have those three things, you're not so good. So, well, I do have the web browser available to me. Terminals. One of the options is GNOME Terminal. Luckily, we installed it. <laughs> so, so, I have a terminal. Now, we installed the Tent2 panel. It's not on the screen because it doesn't just automatically launch on its own, right? We have to launch it. If I ran it in the terminal right now, Tent2, I have a panel. And it actually works. I can minimize, unminimize. That's nice. Uh, let's open up a, another terminal. I'm going to open up a new terminal rather than a tab, just to make this a little more clear. I'm going to run Nitrogen in this terminal. Nitrogen, again, was the program to set our wallpaper. Nitrogen, command not found. Did I not? Oh, I'm, I think I misspelled it. There we go. I misspelled it again. I will eventually get it. Okay, this is Nitrogen. This is a graphical program that is really nice. A good program to set your wallpapers. It handles multi-monitors very well if you want a different wallpaper for different monitors. That's why I use it. I use multi-monitors and I've, I've used Nitrogen forever. It's always been um, the program I use to draw wallpapers. So we need a directory somewhere on our system that has wallpapers, pictures available for us. Uh, so go to directories and click the add button. And if most people would have pictures, of course, in their pictures directory or something like that. But really, I'm going to go to the root file system here. And I'm going to go to user, share, backgrounds, GNOME. I just happened to know that that directory was there. Uh, you, might, you guys might have to go to the Arch Wiki <laughs> to figure that out. But when you install something like GNOME, it has its own wallpaper pack. And that's where it puts it. And since I knew we installed GNOME, I knew that was here. If it wasn't here, you could install this wallpaper pack by itself without installing GNOME. It's called GNOME-Backgrounds. You could sudo pacman-s yes, GNOME-Backgrounds, I believe is the package name. All right, so add that folder, click OK. Now let's draw one of these wallpapers to our screen. Hit ap Apply, there you go. Now it didn't stretch it to fill the whole screen, so let's go to Scaled. Hit apply, there we go. And assuming that was the wallpaper I wanted, we're good. Now there's one problem with what we, do. now this looks like a, already just doing a wallpaper and a panel, this actually is starting to look like a normal desktop that we could live in. There's one problem. What happens when I close this? Well, the next time I log back in, I won't have a wallpaper. Openbox is not going to run that command every time we log in. Also, when I close this here, I'm going to lose my uh, my panel. 
because that was running in the terminal, right? I launched it with the terminal, I closed the terminal, boom, it goes away. So what we need to do is create some kind of auto start file so those programs automatically launch every time. And this is not just something you do with OpenBox. Every desktop environment or window manager has some way for you to automatically launch certain programs when you need them, if you want them to auto start. Even GNOME. I mean, all that stuff that happens when you launch GNOME, you know, the SysTray and the panel and the shell and all that, a lot of that stuff is hard-coded, but some of it you could turn on and off. Uh, same thing with OpenBox. So I'm, I was opening the terminal, and I, I was about to start doing it in the terminal, but you know what, for this video, let's do it in the graphical program. Let's open up PC Man FM because we installed it. Let's use it. So this is PC Man FM, the file manager. Let's show hidden files, and then your home directory, go to .config. .config is where all the config files for programs should live, although that's not always the case. We'll go to .config, open box. There is no .config slash open box. Open box does not exist. Create the directory if it doesn't exist. Open box. There we go. Now go into that directory. All right, create a file here. Create new, empty file. I'm gonna call it auto start. You know, what a name. Let's open it in whatever text editor you wanna open it in. Now I have gedit, vim, genie all installed. Let's see if genie launches since we installed it. All right, okay. And this is your auto start file. It's gonna be a bash script basically. What do we want to launch on start? Well, I want you to draw the wallpaper every time I launch open box. So nitrogen space dash dash restore. That command restores your wallpaper when you log in. All right. I may want to add an amper sign behind this too. Not sure if that's necessary or not, but it doesn't hurt. And then the next line, how about tent two? That launches our panel. Let's save that. All right, now we're not done. Make this executable. We'll also do this in the GUI. You see, execute says nobody. Yeah, we might want to make that executable. That might be all we need to do. Let's try it out. Let's log out and log back in. Well, logging out takes a little bit of. Well, it's, it's not the logging out of OpenBox that's slow. It's just GDM, the GNOME Display Manager. I think that's. I've noticed GNOME though. Uh, all of its programs, it's you know, not great in a VM sometimes. Anyway, auto start. There you go. Now, eventually, you may want other programs to auto start. Maybe you want Conky on the desktop. Put that in the auto start file. Or maybe you wanted both the panel and maybe a dock on the left-hand side or something. Or maybe you want your panel at the top and a dock at the bottom. Put both the panel and the dock you're running in the auto start. But whatever, you know, in the auto start. So I'm not going to go through just configuring OpenBox. I've done a million videos on OpenBox. Uh, you guys know I love OpenBox. I could actually make a pretty nice open box desktop pretty quickly because I could go to my GitLab page and pull down my old configs. And that's what uh, I suggest you guys do. If you're interested in open box and don't know how to get started, just go get my configs. All right, back to the chat for a minute. All right. No way I'm going to catch up on the chat. I'm not even going to try. <laughs> All right, so. AMD is good for open source? Yes. Wayland is not on NetBSD yet? Well, dang, I should switch to NetBSD then. I kid, guys. I'm not throwing shade on Wayland. I don't. I hope nobody gets their panties in a twist. Every package has GNOME dash. Make it seem GNOME is a narcissist. Yeah. Well, at least they don't name every package with a G in front of it, like the KDE guys do. Yeah, I do most of the things with right hand, okay, but truth is I don't use right hand. It dangles in some useless way. 
Okay, big butt. <laughs> I, I have no idea what you guys were talking about in the chat. I probably don't want to know. Does Arch Labs use OpenBox? Yes, that was its default desktop, if you will, forever. Now they offer other versions. They, I think they do i3. I think they may do BSPWM as well. But yeah, for, for a long time, it was like the OpenBox Arch distro. Well, there's several of them. ArchBang has been around forever, too. That also is built on OpenBox. Of course, the default Arco Linux, which has three different window managers on it. One of them is OpenBox. A lot of Arch-based distros like OpenBox. For good reason. It's very light, very minimal, fast, very configurable. You can do a, a ton of stuff, which I'm not going to demonstrate on this video, but you can do a lot with OpenBox. Alright. Why is Wayland bad? But Wayland is just not a... I mean, it's basically alpha software. I mean, it's it's not ready for prime time use. It will probably be okay once it's fully developed. It's just not it's just not usable, really. <laughs> yeah, Victor, that's not necessarily it's bad. It's just you know got a lot more development that needs to happen. Yeah. So DT, we were talking about how my left hand is useless. Not going there, Big Pod. Uh, I don't want this uh, this stream to get taken down. <laughs> when did OpenBox start generating a menu? By default, it, it'll vary from distro to distro depending on what they do with some of their stuff. But by default, OpenBox does have like a hard-coded menu. This is that. It is it's not populated with my programs. I mentioned this. This is hard-coded. It guesses that... You might have a calculator, a character, and these are like the GNOME calculator and character. I mean, it guesses that you probably have at least one or maybe multiples of these text editors. Uh, I just happen to have gedit because I installed that GNOME <laughs> desktop early in the stream. But really, I, if this was a base install, I'd have none of these five text editors. So this menu, even though it's populated, you're not going to have any of this stuff unless you installed it before you logged into OpenBox Firefox. I knew I needed a, this was why I was telling you guys, you're going to need a web browser, you're going to need a terminal emulator, you're going to need a text editor to do anything. Install those three things before you get in here, uh, just to make your life easier. <laughs> but yeah, this, you're going to have to edit this menu. N most of these programs, like 99% of the stuff in here, you're not going to have. File managers, it assumes you're going to use one of the big ones, Nautilus, Thunar, uh, KWIN, ROX, PC Man FM. Luckily, I installed PC Man FM because I knew we'd need a file manager. <laughs> I've, I've done this a few times. That's why I knew we needed these things. But yeah, this would be a useless menu if you hadn't known that uh, you needed those things. How would you edit this menu? Well, you'd have to go to dot .config slash open box. There'll be an XML file there. Actually, it's not there by default. I think you have to go grab it on your system somewhere by default. What I would do, though, is there's ways to manually generate this. You know what? I said I wasn't going to do an open box video because I've done them. <laughs> Let's open up a f uh, our terminal, actually, in this case. So GNOME terminal, luckily, we did install. And Menu Maker. It's one of the programs I like. I'm not sure if it's in the standard Arch repos or not. It may not be. It is. Well, I, I really wasn't expecting Menu Maker to be there, but it is. So, what is the command for Menu Maker? I think it's M Maker instead of the full name Menu Maker. M Maker space and then the name of the window manager that you want window maker to generate a menu for because it works with openbox i think it works with fluxbox jwm and uh, two or three others so m maker space openbox hope i got this command right no terminal emulator specified there's one other ar argument you have to do you just, i think you have to give it space dash t for terminal it's a flag for terminal and give it a terminal emulator specified what, what it'll use by default. I don't know. 
will it accept x term as an argument? Um, it, it would, but x term is not on the system, of course. We, we didn't install it. Probably should install x term. See if it'll take gnome dash terminal as an argument. Refuse to overwrite. Okay, let's give all of that sudo privileges. Or we can use the dash f option for force. Well, let's try that. Dash f. Okay, that worked. I know that was confusing. It took me a minute. Uh, it's been a while since I've run Menu Maker. I actually don't use Menu Maker, by the way, on my open box installs to generate my menus. I do everything by hand. I just open up a plain text editor and always just add and remove things in the menu myself. But Menu Maker is a nice way to kind of automate it. Now, Menu Maker has not changed this menu yet because you need to restart or reconfigure open box. And if you go to, is there a way to do it in the default menu? I thought there was, but it doesn't look like there is. I'm going to run open box space, and I think it's dash dash reconfigure. Could be wrong about that. Nope, that was it. This is Menu Maker. It built this menu system, and we actually do have these programs. It went out there and found all the programs that were installed on our system that had a dot desktop file and made a menu system of those programs. We actually have all of this. So that useless menu where most of the stuff was just dead links. You'd click on it, nothing would happen. We actually have all this stuff. And again, I don't want to get too deep into an open box tutorial because that's not really what I was going to do. Actually, originally when I started the stream, I thought, man, I might get through three or four different window managers, maybe a couple of big desktop environments. I didn't expect to spend that much time on GNOME the way we did. And to be honest, we spent a little bit more time on OpenBox. You know, we've been streaming for an hour and 35 minutes, and I was saying I probably this is going to be a short stream this evening. We weren't going to go very long. We are just going to take care of a couple of things here. But DWM doesn't do Wayland, yeah. Mo almost no tiling window, uh, almost no window manager tiling, floating, anything does Wayland. I mentioned GNOME and I mentioned Sway, which most of you probably have never heard of, which is just an i3 clone re rewritten to run on uh, Wayland. That's about, that's about all your options, really. I mean... Should we do a DWM install? Since we did OpenBox, which is, is a floating window manager, should we do a tiling window manager? I mean, I, we'll cut the stream off at the two hour mark, which means I've got 24 minutes starting now. If I, if I just jump right into it. All right. So what we're gonna do, let me, Back in the VM here. All right. Assume this is the base Arch install again. We didn't install GNOME. We didn't install OpenBox. First thing you need to do, of course, log in. I'm going to log in as root since we have to re add and remove software. I might have mistyped that password. Yeah, I thought so. All right. So I'm logged in as root. Xorg, we already sudo pacman s xorg. So we got the xorg. Uh, graphical server on here. Let's do a tiling window manager. And you guys love the suckless projects. I do too. DWM is actually a pretty cool window manager. So, sudo pacman s DWM. Now, this is going to the repos and getting a pre built binary of DWM. Now, we're going to do something different later with DWM, but for now, let's just go get that. And what else would you need? Now, assume we hadn't done GNOME or OpenBox. What's the three things I've already told you that you absolutely better have before you log in to DWM? You need a terminal, so you do something like even Xterm or URXVT, whatever. Have a terminal, have a text editor, if you didn't want just Vim or Nano, so, and have a web browser. Firefox, you know, you've already got it. 
you want a lot, uh, login manager like DM would be a good option. That's all you need. If you had those four things, you would be pretty good just getting started. You could at least log into DWM and from, from the graphical environment, then you could add and remove the rest of the software you need. But all I need is just to install DWM. DWM, target not found. Is DWM really not in the Arch repos? I guess it's not. I'm sure there's pre-built packages in the AUR, but we haven't enabled it. Tell you what, you guys, I'm going to do something crazy here. Let's switch from DWM. Let's pick a different tiling window manager. Sorry to disappoint you guys, but let's do something very similar to DWM. Xmonad. <laughs> this is, this is going to be a big install. Xmonad has to pull down Haskell. The Haskell programming language, and it has to pull down the Haskell compiler, GHC. GHC is a rather large program. This is a 400 megabyte install, just installing the base Xmonad system. By the way, that's not all we, we have to install to run Xmonad. We also have to install a package called Xmonad contrib for all the extra stuff. So it's a, similar to the suckless guys, DWM, you install the base DWM package and then you patch it. Xmonad does something similar. You install Xmonad, which is kind of like the base Xmonad, similar to the base DWM. It's not that usable. It's kind of usable. Both of them are kind of usable, but you want to eventually add some extra stuff. Instead of patching Xmonad, you just install this extra package called Xmonad Contrib that has all the extra niceties that you'll ever want. So sudo pacman dash s well, xmonad dash contrib. And that's just a 20 megabyte download for that extra package. So it's really not bloated, you know, just adding that extra package, but it will give you uh, some extra stuff that you're going to want. And from there, we reboot. Again, hopefully, before you did that, you installed a login manager and enabled it. Hopefully, you installed a terminal emulator, a text editor, and a web browser. I'm going to keep ha hammering that home. For those of you not familiar, familiar with minimal window managers, you're going to want to make sure you have a terminal emulator, a text editor, and a web browser. All right, so choose our user. Now we're going to choose this Xmonad session. And very similar to Openbox, when I hit enter, there we go. That's Openbox. Now, by default, I have to remember the default key bindings here because Xmonad, I think the default mod key is Alt. So I think Alt Enter, or is it Alt Shift Enter? Might be Super Enter, Super Shift Enter. What? is hmm that's weird I know it's one of those combinations but nothing is happening I'm pretty sure it's alt shift enter yeah somebody in the chat by the way I'm looking at the YouTube chat just briefly which VM is being used uh, as far as the uh, Hypervisor, this is a virtual box. Yeah, I'm wondering if this is just a problem with the VM. And ah, I, I know what the problem is. All right, guys, we installed Xmonad. <laughs> uh, if you get if you think about it, you'll realize what my problem is. I, I run window uh, tiling window managers on my host machine. Um, right. Uh, so <laughs> I'm entering commands in the VM, but it's really on my host machine. Anytime I touch super, it's not going to register in the VM. It's always gonna it's gonna be my host machine. That's gonna cause me some problems. Yeah, Penguin, DT, you're supposed to remember the key bindings. I've installed Xmonad enough times. I'm pretty sure that default key binding is Alt, uh, Alt, Shift, Enter. 
I could look it up, but I, I'm pretty sure I was hitting the right key combination. I think it's the, the same default key combination in DWM, too. Xmonad, in a lot of ways, is very similar to DWM. The only big difference, obviously, one's written in C, one's written in Haskell, but the way they handle multi-monitors is completely different. That, that's the big difference. I prefer, actually, the way Xmonad handles multi-monitors. But both are good. This was Xmonad, but yeah. So I was trying to hit key combinations in this and... Anything with this, the super key, it's obviously not going to do anything for me. What I would need to do in my host machine, I need to disable <laughs> the super key from doing any. Actually, what I would need to do, it'd be better if I had a uh, floating window manager to log into. Like I could log in on my host machine to Openbox to do videos about tiling window managers. That way, there's never a conflict. Ah, yeah, that's a good point. Xmonad needs Xterm. Yeah, by default, the Xmonad configs, the hard-coded default config that we haven't changed, expects Xterm to be there. So, you know, the default key combination looks for Xterm. It assumes everybody has Xterm installed, even if you don't use it. It also assumes dmenu is on your system. dmenu we didn't install, so... Because there is a default key binding. I think it's Alt plus P in Xmonad that should give us a command prompt. It's not going to work because we didn't install D menu. So Alt P, I think, yeah. Is it Alt D? Yeah. None of them are going to work though because I don't have those programs installed. So really I can't do anything. At this point I would have to drop down into a TTY which I guess I could do. Yeah, why not? We have a few minutes. I'm going to go back to full screen here. Alright, so how would you fix this? Because that's the point of these crash and burn kind of streams <laughs> when things don't go right. I'll show you guys how to fix them. I mean, it's a real world problem, right? It's like I log into my window manager, I can't do anything because I don't have anything installed. You know, how do I fix this? Well, get back to a prompt. Now, on your physical machine, on your keyboard, Control Alt and F2, F3, F4, pick one. <laughs> will get you to a TTY prompt. And from here, I could sudo... Actually, what I would need to do... I'm going to do... I'm not sure where the default xmonad config file is on the system. I'm going to sudo pacman-s a package called mlocate. mlocate. Install it. Not a very big program, should just take a second. And this allows us to have a shell command called locate. <laughs> uh, before you do that, though, that locate command that goes and searches every file on your system and finds the one you're looking for, it, you need to run this command sudo update db, all one word, update db. It'll take a minute. It scans your system. Now, locate, and I'm going to locate xmonad gonna go out and find every file or directory that's got xmonad as part of the name and uh, hopefully I will see one uh, that's too many I see share user share doc I see it xmonad.sh now that's not the one I need I need xmonad.hs actually the one I need no I won't find that I may have to pull up the arch wiki I thought it was pretty obvious where it's at. Let me CD. I'm determined to do this without reading because why not? <laughs> User share doc xmonad. If there's any women watching the stream, you guys, you 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 gals know, uh, guys never read the instruction manuals when we put together anything. We just. <laughs> Uh, nothing is there. Let me make sure there's nothing. It's just hidden. No, there's nothing there. So it's not in user share doc xmonad. 
Well, one of you guys I know is going to tell me in the chat, but that's cheating. The real way you would do this, guys, if you were installing Xmonad on Arch, is we would go to the Arch Wiki. I'm going to do a search for Xmonad in the Arch Wiki. Of course, it comes up. And where's the default config? It's going to tell me. That's, that's one of the first things it's going to tell me. Create an Xmo, .xmonad directory. Put the xmonad.hs in it. Okay. The default configuration for Xmonad is quite usable and is achieved by simply running... Okay. Okay, where is the default config? That's what I'm looking for. User, share. Well, it's telling me how to find... how to find uh, the xmonad.hs file with the find command. I, I can try that. But why tell me how to find it with this command instead of just telling me the directory... Uh, like that's cool that whoever wrote that uh, arch wiki page put this command in there but why not just tell me where it's at <laughs> instead of telling me how to find it because the find command of course did not return anything as I kind of expected it not to because I, I didn't find it with the locate command either hmm I'm going to drink a beer and think about this. How we want to proceed. There is an easy way to solve this problem, by the way. As far as how to do something in Xmonad other than just stare at the black screen. The Xmonad config expects Xterm to be on the system and it expects uh, Dmenu to be on the system, so sudo pacman dash capital s x term space d menu both of them are in the repos awesome all right so now if i can i get back to the graphical environment uh, we'll just reboot the vm I've never had a problem finding the default xmonad config before. I should know where it is on the system. I bet it's somewhere in slash etsy. That sounds familiar, like it's somewhere in slash etsy. I could dig around and probably find it. But let's just see if xmonad works when I log in. So, alt, shift, enter. I, I knew the default combination. That works. That's xterm. Really bright white X term. Wow, I'm blinded. Alt P runs D menu. Though that from there we can do anything in Xmonad, right? Now that you have a terminal and a run launcher, you can do anything. From there you can install nitrogen. As a matter of fact, we've already got nitrogen installed. So if I do Alt P right now and run nitrogen space dash dash restore. Would it? No, it won't do that. Well, we can launch the pro. We can run it. No, uh, because one. Yeah, well, let's go ahead and run it. Of course, I've got to type it right. Why can I not type right today? Hmm. Yeah. Of course, it won't restore anything until I actually open the program and go find. Wow. You guys seeing this? Command not found. Nitro GE slash slash. It's, it's like some weird error. Okay. Alt P. To get D menu. Open up good home terminal. <laughs> Nitrogen. Dash dash restore. There. We got a wallpaper at least. I don't know why X term is wigging out on me. Uh, but that is the default terminal emulator. That Xmonad expects to be on the system. Now once you configure Xmonad. You can change that to anything you want. 
Uh, X term is fine, but I, I would change it to something else. So now we have wallpaper. We don't have a panel. Um, what I would do is I would get back into a terminal and sudo. I know this font in X term is extremely small. sudo pacman dash capital S X mobar is typically the one most people use with Xmonad. Because it's written in Haskell and Xmonad kind of expects you to use Xmobar. Now you could use something like Polybar or Lemonbar. Maybe even something like Tint2. I don't know how well that would work. But I found using a, a bar other than Xmobar to be kind of buggy. Polybar it eh, really doesn't work that well with Xmonad for some reason. Anyway. Well, that is like a blinding white terminal. I've got to change the color scheme for that X term if I was using it. Wow. All right. Now, if I just ran Xmobar without writing a config file for it, uh, Xmobar actually did launch. You can't see it because... The window here. Well, actually, I grab. Ah, keep forgetting. Xmobar launch. You can't see it because the window is in front of it. I'm gonna kill the VM though. Actually, let's see if I can get it back into place. I can't. Once again, this is one of the problems when you have a tiling window manager on your host machine, and you're doing a tiling window manager in a VM the streams get crossed, right? <laughs> I'm hitting a command for the VM and the host machine is is doing it or vice versa. So, you know what? That was enough though. By the way, that's my host machine there. Logged into Qtile for this video. It's been days, maybe weeks really since I've logged into Qtile for any reason. I thought I'd log in and make a video in Qtile today because why not? been an awesome for a while so. all right let's back to the chat all right so i'm gonna kill the stream in about five minutes anybody wants to get in anything get it in the chat so it lives forever now's the time all right we having some problems with the stream we got some buffering issues, guys. Yeah, looks like it. Of course, I expected some problems with the stream, too, because most of the stream we were downloading software. That's always going to cause some problems. Yeah, DT has three monitors, which blinds him, yeah. Yeah, I... I Fine light above 3600K, radioactive. Good for kitchen lighting, terrible for putting something in front of your retinas. Good point. Stump WM. Now maybe eventually. You can quit the VirtualBox VM Manager. Still just 135 likes. Thumbs up. I use Arch, by the way. Wow. I wonder how many people said that while I was uh, playing around in the VM. After that, we can destroy the VMs that were cloned. We can do the RM-RF or DD. You know what? I know I'm never going to use that GNOME VM that we just did. So, let me launch VirtualBox. Did I not type that right? I'm launching VirtualBox, by the way, uh, with uh, D menu. That time you got to see it, but the first time it was on a different monitor. You didn't know what I was doing. I launched VirtualBox. And let's go ahead and relaunch this VM. Switch to full screen. I'm going to log in to GNOME, and then we're going to have some fun. All right. So what do you guys want to do? You want to RM-RF, or do you want a DD? I mean, we could do the, the bash fork bomb, too, but that doesn't permanently destroy the VM. Uh, again, I don't care about this VM. <laughs> this this VM was just a test VM. I cloned it for purposes of, you know, let's break something. So before we go, you know what? Let's just do the REM-RF. Yeah, because it's more fun. You're right. 
<laughs> Somebody said it's more fun. It's more fun because you really don't get any information after you do it. I mean, you know you screwed up as soon as you hit enter, but it doesn't really give you any feedback. You, know, you don't know how bad you messed up. So, it's GNOME Terminal. Let's go ahead and see if I can change the font and everything while I'm here. All right, guys, where is the settings? I don't use GNOME Terminal that often either. How can I change the font? No, oh, command, scrolling, colors. Okay, here we go. Let's change to solar, solarized for a dark theme. That'll help a lot. And text. What is the text size? Text appearance, 80 by 24 columns. That's nice. Monospace. 12, let's change that to monospace. Bump it up to 16. We can really see it. Did we not change? I thought we changed this. I solarized. Is that the light solarized? There we go. All right, so sudo rm dash rf root. I'm not sure if Arch is one of those distros that has some uh, restrictive things going on. It might warn us that this is not a good idea. Yep, it is dangerous to operate recursively on root. Use dash dash no dash preserve dash root to override this fail safe. So run that same command. This time give it dash dash no dash preserve dash root. All right, and this is what I'm talking about. I, I mean, immediately after you hit that, <laughs> I mean, you know you messed up, but it's like it pauses for a second, and then you get, it was, you know, it's removing everything, but eventually it just stops. You're getting no more feedback in the terminal. Could I do anything else? Could I do a simple ls command? ls, command not found. When you run the command ls and nothing happens, that's when you know you messed up sudo reboot it's going to complain that both sudo probably and reboot are no longer available <laughs> sudo no such file or directory reboot reboot command not found there's nothing left that vm that vm is hosed i'm going to run d menu on my host machine and run a quick x kill to kill that vm cuz obviously i can't kill the vm from inside the vm anymore Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and delete the VM. So that VM right there, Arch Linux GNOME, the one we've been working in all day, remove, delete all files. That VM gone. <laughs> I don't know why we love sudo rm-rf root so much. I like it. You guys like it. We should make this like a once a week thing. We just all get together just for a rm-rf stream. Yeah, I once rm-rf because Firefox didn't want to work and I was so angry. Yeah, I, I had a guy the other day message me and said he did a rm-rf you know, space, and he was doing a deep directory. He was rm rfing like a deep directory, like slash home, slash user, slash, you know, document, slash whatever. And it's like five or six directories deep. And he accidentally typed a space after that very first slash, and he didn't realize it because it looked normal. But you can imagine what happened. And the rule on that, the, the lesson on that is never ever run rm dash r you shouldn't run rm dash rf on any directory unless you absolutely have to but you should never try to run it on a directory that's like more than like two directories deep cd into that directory and then <laughs> run that command or, or cd into the parent directory and then run that command don't try to you know rm dash rf a really long path name because as soon as you accidentally add a space where you didn't mean to, 
you've messed up. Yeah, why would anybody run sudo rm-ref root? You wouldn't. There's, there's no point to do it. There's no good reason ever to do it. Because uh, it doesn't, doesn't do anything. I mean, it, it wrecks your Linux install. But it doesn't, like, format the drive or anything. DD, at least. When you accidentally DD, well, at least you have formatted the drive. <laughs> you know, it served a purpose. You formatted the wrong drive, but at least it did something. Once I tried it on a laptop for fun, I wanted to reinstall anyway. I didn't know my UEFI firmware was auto-mapped, and you ended up deleting your entire CMOS. Oops. This is why you don't use RM-RF. Yep. DT, is it possible to have one config for most, if not all, window managers? It's not possible. Typically, the config files are, are written in whatever language those window managers are programmed in. They're not all programmed in the same language. Like my Qtile config is a Python script because Qtile is written in Python. The config file for BSPWM, I think, is ba basically a bash script. The config file for DWM, of course, is in C. The config file for Xmonad is in Haskell. No, you can't, have, you can't have them all using the same script. It's just not possible. But it's not, I mean, you can, all, you can configure them all to use the same key bindings and stuff. You just have to tweak each config file a little bit. The sy syntax will be a little different, but it's not difficult. I basically use the same kind of config for every tiling window manager that I have installed. I've got six installed on this machine right now. You can do control plus home to access the menu to shut down the VM. Good tip, yeah. Weekly rm-rf gnome. <laughs> yeah, that's what we should do once a week. We rm-rf gnome off of something. I just keep a uh, a VM of Ubuntu around. I just clone it, and every week we just wipe it out. That rf stands for reboot Firefox? No, that stands for recursively, meaning rm for remove, r for recursively, meaning delete this directory, and any directory or file in that directory, and any file or directory in that subdirectory, and so forth and so forever. So when you rm-rf root, then it, it, just, it deletes root and everything in it. The F stands for force, meaning don't warn me about any, you know, force this thing to... What happens if the file system is uh, immutable. Yeah, good. I have no idea. I I, I missed a ton of chat. <laughs> it jumped ahead on me. Sorry, guys. Yeah, more RM RF commands. Why BIOS over UEFI? For me, I should, I don't. I just have always stuck with it. You know, I was doing all this before UEFI was around, so I've just always stuck with, you know, master boot record. Of course, on some of my machines, like my laptops are kind of older hardware, I just, I just do BIOS. I know uh, as far as, is there an advantage to UEFI over BIOS? Uh, apparently there is. Some people say there might be a bit of a speed advantage. or Obviously, UEFI was kind of created for security reasons, but... I'm not sure if it's really any real difference between them. But just because I do legacy BIOS <laughs> doesn't mean you have to. I mean, you can do UEFI. So if you were watching the, uh, the install of Arch the other day that I did, uh, the only difference is whenever I did the uh, partition tables in what, CF disk, instead of creating DOS, you should create a GPT. Uh, table. So you do DOS for legacy BIOS. You do GPT for UEFI. The other thing you would have to do is when you uh, do the make file system, you know, you have to do what MKFS dot fat. Read the Arch Wiki. The steps are similar to what I did for BIOS. It's just you're going to type some different commands. <laughs> Not nothing, nothing complicated. 
Somebody is saying, I use Audacious, by the way. Yeah, Audacious is not bad for a minimal um, audio player. Of course, it's kind of a clone of the old Winamp. <laughs> it's like Winamp, except it's free and open source software on Linux, right? You can put, it's compatible with the old Winamp themes. Those of you that remember Winamp two decades ago on Windows, you know, had a bunch of cool community themes. They all work on Audacious. It takes those old Winamp themes. None of those themes look quite right on modern monitors, though, because we use such bigger monitors and higher resolution. You know, the font's so tiny if you're using those old themes. Now, what is the best between KDE and GNOME? Uh, Xmonad? <laughs> Open box? What, you just discounting those? We're just that's that's all that exists, right? KDE and GNOME. Yeah, it's like uh what's the best? Ford or Chevy? What's the best? Coke or Pepsi? Like oh. It's a question that doesn't even make sense, right? Try 'em. See what you like better. Why are you asking me? I don't use either one. Uh, yeah, Hink, for example, KDE without a doubt. Big Pod here in a minute is going to jump in and say Gnome if he's still around. Uh, yeah, Dead Beef for music. Yeah, I agree. If you want, Dead Beef is really like the perfect graphical music player. Small, small download. Doesn't have a ton of features, but it's got what you need. It's not bloated in any way, and it has a great name. All right, guys. Well, we've been streaming for about two hours and ten minutes, and I said I wasn't going to stream that long this evening, but I think we covered a, a few good topics today. We got GNOME on Arch installed. We also played around with OpenBox and Xmonad a little bit on Arch. But, of course, we got to interact with the chat a lot, too, so this was fun. Glad you guys hung out with me the last couple of hours. Been boring if you guys hadn't shown up. Yeah, Penguin, have a great night, DT. I agree. Have a great night, Penguin, Film, Telsaurus, Sword, Cooper Jan. <laughs> Everybody in the chat, really, thank you guys. Of course, before I go, let me, of course, thank these guys too. Ansem, Chris, the other Chris, Douglas, Dylan, George, Jack, Lee, or Mitchell, Philip, Rob, Robert, Sam, Tony, Willie, those guys, they're awesome. Without these guys, these shows wouldn't be possible. Also, I want to thank all those names you see on the screen, each and every one of those guys that support the channel. They help support the channel over on Patreon. If you want to help support me, you can find me at DistroTube on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.